Hello, this is Nick here from Gorgon Reviews. I'm talking with Devaney Penn, the director and co-writer of the film The Black Mass. The Black Mass is a true story in the 1970s Florida of a man stalking and attacking a sorority. Thank you so much for spending time on a Sunday to talk about your movie. Yes, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate the opportunity. Um, my first question is always the same, and that's what's the first movie you remember seeing in theaters? Oh, good question. Uh, I'm going to date myself, The Little Mermaid. <laughs> <laughs> um so you've been About an actress as far away from this movie as it gets yeah <laughs> yeah you've been an actress in a ton of films at this point um what got you into wanting to be an actress uh i i didn't originally i was um i was a musician and um i was pursuing musical theater i always wanted to perform since i was like two uh, my parents were like when you can sign your own contracts you can do them and they, i think they thought i would grow out of it but ha i'm here all these years later. So uh, I, I was trying to find a musical theater group when I went to college and I couldn't find anything, but I found an independent film audition. I didn't even know what the heck that was, uh, but I went cause that's my personality. I'm like, I'll try it. And um, I accidentally booked the lead in it. And it was a horror movie. It came out and did pretty well. Um, Lloyd Kaufman like championed me. He's the, for those who don't know, he's the president of Troma. Mm -hmm. um, and he kind of toured me around and introduced me to a ton of people. And um, they saw my movie and said, hey, come do mine. And I was like, okay, I will. And it just kind of spiraled. I just was constantly filming and it's been like 15 and so years. And so uh, so I ended up becoming an actress in horror movies. I tried a couple different genres briefly and I was like, this sucks. Uh, I came right back to to the genre and I've I've been here ever since. I love it. Yeah, I was going to ask, uh, when are you going to star in a musical? Uh, so it's super funny you say that. That is my number one bucket list. Now that I have made The Black Mass, that was that was my passion project. But my my bucket list item at this point is to do a horror musical. So hopefully I'll get to do that uh, in the next year here too. So cross your fingers for me. It's a very small genre. It needs more for sure. Th th thank you. It does. They, and there's a market for it. Everyone loves repo. Everyone, so like, I think it's just, it's a lot to do. It's expensive to do. So we don't get enough of them, but, um, but I'm hoping to have the opportunity for sure. Um, was there any of those projects that you think was ex the most difficult to act in that you can recall? Um, Probably, I mean, and it's kind of going right into this, probably the most difficult things to act in are um, are the ones that are inspired by true cases and real people. I've done a couple now. I did um, The Black Dahlia. I did Charles Manson. I did um, Casey Anthony. And so uh, those come with not only an entertainment value that you have to... Um, to live up to because you know it's it's a show or it's a movie and so there's an expectation for the audience to be entertained but then you also have to balance that with um the emotional responsibility of this was somebody's life and um and you are taking on the responsibility of telling that so it's um balancing and finding that fine line the duality of that is is definitely the most challenging when it's you know um, I love to play villains, so it's, you know, extra hard to kind of get in that mindset, but truthfully and honestly portray it when you're playing, you know, a vampire or a zombie or, you know, even a, a, a killer and a slasher that's totally fabricated. You could just kick off your brain and have fun and just go for it, um, which I love to do, too. But this the the true crime stuff, it definitely complicates it. That's great. You also answered a later question that makes it a lot easier. Um how accurate would you say your final vision for the black mass ended up being? Uh, so I got very, very close to what I wanted to do. So I had spent so much time uh, with this story and with its case. Uh, I, so I, when I started acting, I, I played a lot of villains and I wanted to pull as honestly as I could uh, from material. And a lot of times you're not playing human characters. You're not playing, you know, like supernatural, supernatural elements. So, so where do you pull from as an actor for that? So what I ended up doing was studying true crime cases and real life monsters. So I could understand the psychology and the approach to that, and I could build a character from it. So in doing that, I spent a lot of time with, with real life monsters, such as uh, Ted Bundy himself. And so I had been very, very familiar with the case for years after I did my Charles Manson movie um, and how kind of a different approach to that was well received by audiences. I immediately thought of the story I wanted to do with Black Mass and I was um, trying to get it made for almost 10 years. 
but because it's such a different kind of movie anyone who was financing or distributing was like we want the same thing that's out there a hundred times over you know they don't we don't want anything different audiences aren't ready for it and so i couldn't do it until finally you know i, I found a partner in, in my distributor cleopatra and they kind of just took a deep breath and said give it a shot and they were very hands-off on the approach. Usually that's not the case. Usually you have to answer to a lot of people and um, they really just let me do my thing. So the the approach, the voyeuristic over the shoulder approach was absolutely intentional in what I wanted to do. But um, the events themselves that you see portrayed in the movie are 100% historically accurate. They all come from uh, the case files, from witness testimony. And so you are literally literally living out that day with him in his shoes over his shoulder mm -hmm. um and i wanted to spend time with the people from this day because in extensive portrayals in hollywood and the media of this case these people from the kyle mega murders were like a two or three minute blip in this serial killer story and i just thought it was so gross that these people who were forever impacted whether they were attacked or they lost their life that day or they were the friend or relative or even someone at school whose lives were never the same after this day they don't even get to be a forefront in their own attack or murder mm -hmm. they're an afterthought in a monster's pop culture story and it just sat so wrong with me for so long um that i wanted to give them back the spotlight in their own story and so that was the approach for black mass yeah, for those who obviously haven't seen it yet, most of it is a uh, point of view of the man in question over his shoulder or through his eyes looking through windows, and uh, the credits label him as me, uh, yes. me, not not this guy right here, but <laughs> it's... He's, it's... He's, he's literally the center of his world, mm -hmm. so this is him living out his day. Um, yeah. But in the attempt to take the attention and power away from him, you have to learn about the people he interacts with and ultimately impact. Mm -hmm. So it's a it's an empowering way to to steal the spotlight from what he thought was his story. Uh, to keep things a little vague, uh, was there anything in particular that inspired the very gruesome scene, I'd say, in the middle? Yes. Um, so as you could probably imagine, that's been um, a hot topic in, in the press tour for this. Uh, it is the only thing in the movie that verbatim didn't happen that day. However, the scene itself is 100% taken from Bundy's own testimony. And so he was asked um, by professionals, this is the case that spawned the term serial killer. Mm -hmm. So um, the actions that he committed uh, this day and this week were ultimately what FBI profilers will put together in speaking with with him um, on death row. They had him speak extensively about his motivation, his thought process, um, his sexual fantasies, how they correlated with violence. And ultimately, they put together what was known as the first profile, and then that became the term serial killer. So the fantasy scene that you see in the Black Mass is literally taking the words from the FBI profiler case that he he testified about and putting a visual to what he would think about, what he would lust about, what would ultimately happen when he was early in his career um, as a peeping Tom when he looked at the windows. And so it's such an important scene because aside from visually being, you know, intense, um, Prior to that moment, you're following along this person as they go about their day, and a regular person might be interested in what happens in the sorority house, right? It, it's not it's not the greatest, but it's not super out of the, the norm to think, maybe I'd peep in a window and see what sorority girls are doing today. You know, most people would be moderately interested in a shower scene. I think that's why it's so popular of an element that you see in horror movies. But then you see a very stark divide about what a regular person, you, the viewer, going along on this day, where their train of thought, where their fantasy, where their curiosity lies versus where somebody who is programmed like Bundy does. And so that's why that scene happens exactly at that time and I think as impactful as it is because you understand now 
this is not a regular person, not a regular day, and you're in for something very, very, very sinister. That's for sure. Um, with the release finally here, do you already have your eyes on your next project? It's a great question. Uh, so I'm actually directing um, a pilot of a TV show that is uh, not horror. It's the first thing I've ever done that's not really, really horror. Uh, but I, after spending a year touring with this film and having you know the intense material that it was, uh, I was ready to try something a little lighthearted and uh, to digest. Uh, so um, my partner on this, Michelle Romano, she uh, she came from the soap world and that was kind of her passion project. And she buckled up and it, despite being terrified, <laughs> helped me put together uh, the Black Mass and has been doing that. So I told her since it was, you know, so, such a successful ride together that I would turn around and help her do her passion project. So we're actually shooting that this week. Yeah. And um, following that, I am, and I've been talking about that a little bit today with with different people. I, I am looking for my next project as a genre director. Um, I, when I did this, I didn't know if I would pursue it again um, behind the lens, but I almost feel um, a responsibility to at this point. Um, a lot of people have have told me this film has impacted them um, and had it's had a positive effect on a lot of people. Um, in touring with, with the last year, I've met a lot of really incredible people who shared um, intimate stories of assault or rape or um, even people who attended Florida State and ultimately, um, my last screening, a woman who was part of the sorority, um, and all of them told me how uh, validated they felt, how seen they felt, um, and thanked me for her taking a risk on telling such uh, an unconventional story. And so I, that's been weighing on me too. So I feel like if I have the ability to do that, um, I, I almost do have a responsibility to to possibly continue. I don't know how I wanna follow this up yet. Um, so I haven't committed to anything, but uh, I am looking for projects that I can take on that will um, educate as well as entertain. Once again, thank you so much time for spending uh, time answering some questions about the making of the Black Mass and how we got mm -hmm. here. The Black Mass is available now on Blu-ray, DVD, and wherever you can buy digital copies. Thank you so much. I appreciate you having me on. I look forward to talking with you again when we can spend a little more time like getting into everything and mm -hmm. uh, and hopefully some other topics as well so it's not quite so dark in here. Yeah. <laughs> but thank you so much for having me and giving me the opportunity to speak about the film. Um, if anybody has questions about it online, um, I'm very active. I'm a horror fan myself. I'm part of the communities. I love chatting with movie fans. Um, get in touch and, and let's go through it. You too. <laughs>